listen, there's a handful of you guys who have not yet watched The Last of Us or Succession, right? There's a lucky few of you. And because we've been watching, a lot of us have been watching it episodically, right? But you lucky, lucky few, right, are there with an entire first season of one of the highest rated TV shows of all time, the greatest TV video game adaptation of all time, The Last of Us, which the finale just dropped there. And oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's really good. I'm a huge fan. Uh, but you also have the first three seasons of Succession just sitting there like a, like. Like you're at a wedding and you're standing there by the door where all the little uh, all the little bites are coming out, all the little hors d'oeuvres, all the little appetizers, and you're standing there at the door and you've got a very good eye to eye connection with one of the waiters, and you're just gobbling up all these lovely treats like a little pig, <laughs> all right? That's what you have right now. All of these delicious treats to be to binge. We've all been watching episodic like mugs, but you lot can watch it and binge it, right? That's sitting there waiting for you, available. On now, who happened as well to be the sponsors of this podcast? So thank you now for sponsoring this pod, and enjoy you dirty pigs. <laughs> enjoy your little truffles, and um, and uh, enjoy your work performance absolutely plummeting while you binge on this quality TV. It is truly the golden age. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff there. I'm recording this live from my car, live from my key asshole, my key asshole, my key asshole. Um, and um, I'm look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still rocking that fucking L L plate. And I've actually delude. I realised this recently. You know the way I've said that that's actually that L plate is not that L plate does not stand for learner. It stands for <laughs> stands for lick out master. You know, you know, I've said that before. I even had T-shirts made. By the phenomenal Kathy Burke, um, to 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 imply that I've kind of bought into that whole crap, and I need, <laughs> I need to get my license. I need to get my license. Everyone has my everyone has their license. I was I was I did a podcast with uh, Michael Fry, Shane Daniel Byrne, um, even Peter McGann. He's a newbie driving. They all have their license. They all have their license. I, I felt like such a you know, and I'm the eldest. You know, when I even went in to the license center to ask for a, a learner license, your man says, how old are you? Jeez. <laughs> like he was really disappointed in me, you know. And I just wanted to be like, see that? Sorry, sorry, mate. Sorry, sunshine. You know something about me. Tell me something about you now and I can make a judgment. huh? <laughs> Tell me something. How many times are you calling your mom? Fuck, that's more than me. All right. Um, How, what are you... What's the worst thing you've ever done? <laughs> All right, well, look, let's turn the tables on this. Uh, you know my name, obviously. You have my passport photo. Um, what's the worst thing you've ever done? <laughs> no, I believe you do actually have to answer that. Um, excuse me, uh, I was going to what's the name? GDPR. GDPR. Tell me the worst thing you've ever done. Um, but look, uh, so I need to get my license. I need to get my license. Uh, this is, you know, I'm being a silly billy. I'm being a silly billy now. Um, I need to get the N, uh, which, of course, you all know stands for never, ever, ever stop <laughs> giving lickouts, you know? So um, I think, look, I'm not going to say I think I've been shadow banned. <laughs> I don't think I have been shadow banned. But it's it's dawned on me now that I'm very vulgar. I'm a very vulgar guy. And I never thought I was a vulgar guy. And I, I always thought I was chalking it down to, like, um, uh, you know, kind of n- newbie nerves, you know? But I'm long enough in the tooth doing this comedy game. I don't need to be swearing as much. You know what I mean? That's kind of, Alison Spiller said that there's like, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm name dropping fucking all the, I'm coming at all the wazoo here. All the comedians that I know that are my friends. I'm name dropping. But she is Louis Walsh, Urbano, he's the horn for. Let's find out in Tony's name drop corner. Here we go. Alison Spittle once told me, my best friend Alison Spittle. Um, she's like, you can almost play like uh, open mic bingo, you know, for a man. Like, is it a, is it a wanking joke? There'd be like a, a you know a boatload of swears up top, you know. So I always chalked it down to that. But I'm long enough now, and I think I can clean up my act. And especially the fact that you know, uh, you know, TikTok people are when people use there's like TikTok. 
<laughs> as soon as you start stammering saying TikTok, you've aged a millennia. You're you are now, you know, I've used this reference an, another time recently, but you're like the end of uh Indiana Jones the Last Crusade, you know. This is the cup of a king. <laughs> Your hair starts growing real long. You start looking look start looking like Christopher Lloyd for just a second and then an actual skeleton, you know. Um but uh so <laughs> so what am I saying? I'm saying that on TikTok, there's like words that you use to not imply the other words, so you don't get like deplatformed or whatever. You don't, you know, you don't get shadow banned. You know, you can't say the word porn. You have to say corn. And now they're kind of getting wise to that. Even corn emojis are kind of like, you know, getting, getting. The, so there's all these kind of language. I don't understand half this stuff. Most of my TikTok feed is like, you know, when he, you know, I don't know, fucking thirsty fucking TikToks, like, you know. When he pulls his ear, and like is a girl like swooning or something like that, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means, and the comments aren't helping me. Comments are ruthless on TikTok. Um, there's one guy who uh, who keeps posting <laughs> posting comments under every TikTok I do, and he just says, and it's, it cuts me every single time. He just says, "Hard to watch." <laughs> He just says, that's hard to watch. And it absolutely <laughs> levels me. I'm going to start. I should have done this earlier in my career. Um, uh, uh, productivity guru Ali Abdal uh, on YouTube. He has a folder. He recommends if you have a folder of nice comments or nice emails people send you for a job well done. Just for the times you need to pick me up, you know. So I think I need to dip, dip, dip my wicket. Uh, why am I saying that? That's nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I just forgot what I was I forgot what I was saying, and I turned into a little pervert. That's what happens with me. I'm kind of like the mic. I'm kind of like Windows 95, but my screensaver is not like a lot of pipes. <laughs> well, it kind of is a lot of pipes being you know all across the screen. It's me just turning into a little absent-minded pervert. You know, I think that's why I can't stop swearing because I think deep down I think I've kind of revealed myself as scum of the earth. <laughs> I think I've just revealed myself publicly. I am now officially scum of the earth. I keep, I keep, uh, my daughter is dribbling, um, which is very advanced for her age. <laughs> Normally you don't start, start dribbling until you get teeth. But she's dribbling now. She was blowing a raspberry there. And her granny was like, she shouldn't be blowing raspberries. Now that's amazing. I'm like, that is amazing. Her like sputtering out fucking air. It's incredible. You know, it must be the genes. You know, if I had a, you know, I have that genius, genius brain, but I just haven't applied myself still. <laughs> She's like, Tony, shut the fuck I'm talking about your baby here. Oh, yeah, whatever. I just haven't applied myself. Um, But anyway, what was I saying? Um, There's, I, I, we used to be obsessed watching Traveler Fight um, call out videos. I mean, it's the purest form of WWE promo there is because they get personal. Do you know what I mean? They're like, you came down here, you know, and you cried. And I'm like, fuck, he cried, this guy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know either of these guys, you know. You cried. But there's a great one. There's one of them where he goes, um, he says, do you know your, he's like, do you know your dribbly mouth? I'll bust that for you. <laughs> I'll bust your dribbly mouth. And so I said that to my daughter. I'm like, that dribbly mouth, I'll bust that for you. And I give her like a wipe in the mouth. Oh, your little dribbly mouth, I'll bust that for you, you know. Um. Because I don't see much of my, <laughs> enough of my friends anymore. And all these kind of quotes. You know those quotes? They're the fucking best days of your life. Just just getting on that. Just You're you're sitting in the shed. Soundboard. Just getting on the fucking soundboard with your mates. Saying the exact same shit. Over and over again. I love it. I adore it. You know? Sorry there. I thought someone was going to come over here and clamp me. I was walking down the road in a high vis. I'm like, "Yeah, you want to say, hey, mate, you want something to clamp? You can clamp this." And I point at my lips, you know, and I go, mm, mm, "Clamp this." If you look for something to clamp, my friend, you can clamp this, and I give him a big wet kiss on his face, you know. I jock him, pull his t-shirt over his head so that his head is sticking out. You know, when you you know you take the t-shirt off, and it almost looks like he's wearing like kind of Marge Simpson hair. Kind of pull it all the way up, right? Jock him. Pull his t-shirt up off, but leave it the, the, the neck still around the top of his head. So he's got a little Marge Simpson hair. And I give him a big wet kiss. And then push him over. <laughs> but you can't do that anymore these days. It is PC gone mad out there. The fact that I can't act like Bugs Bunny. And, you know, 
uh, pull someone's uh, dicky bow or, like back, elasticate it, and then let it go, and then have it smack them in the neck, and then I give them a big wet kiss. Like, Mwah! You know, you can't do that anymore. What am I talking about? Maybe I am a pervert. No one's ever clamped me again. And if you ever try, guess what? I'm going to be sitting right in the car. You'll have to maintain eye contact when you do it. You'll have to cover my face with that sticker that you stick on the window. Right? No, I tell you what. If I ever do get clamped again, I'm going to show up at the premises of Apcoa. And I'm going to clamp myself to every fucker that's in there. I'm going to clamp. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, um, what's it? My beautiful Katamari. Right? Katamari. I'm just going to be rolling around, just adding people to to, the, to this mound of flesh. Right? I'm going to make a rat king. <laughs> with all those fucking guns and I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to, I will. Because guess what? You, if I'm going to be inconvenienced, then you're going to be inconvenienced. Oh, my God. I, I reached a new level of becoming an absolute head melt to the poor person who was on the phone from tech support. Um, for one of my providers. I'm not going to name who, right? But one of the things that I, uh, you know, the service that I have was not working. So I called my provider, right? Because it wasn't working at all. Look, it was my internet, right? My internet was gone. And... Um, like it was bricked, right? The term is bricked because I read that on a forum and you believe you me, when I got onto everyone in tech, I was like, yeah, it's bricked. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm in with the lingo. It's fucking bricked, man. No, the, the, it's, it's one of these routers looks like a wheelie bin and it has a white bar in it, right? And it was just a white bar. That's all it was. When I even pressed one of my wife's earrings that I ended up actually bending into the reset button at the back. You know, you sometimes have to do that. Didn't change anything. Normally after a few seconds, light will turn off. It'll reset. It'll boot back up again. All these things have to have it. So this thing was just constantly beaming this white light. And it wasn't giving off any signal. We couldn't recognize it on the Wi-Fi, on our phones, on our tablets. We had tried every device. I tried everything. For whatever reason, just this thing, pfft, shit the bed, right? So I got on with them. And we moved to dress recently. And there was a whole, I'm not going to go into the whole hollabaloo. But I'll, to summarize, I had to change my address three times for three different people. I had to order a new router twice. Uh, one of the times they didn't even put the order through. And then the second time they sent it to the wrong address. And uh, then they weren't able to drop it. And then a third time, actually, and I'll get to that in a second, right? But anyway, it was a, a, a five-day-long five process. And I spoke to six different people just to get a new router, right? And keep in mind, I changed my address. I mean, I'm using the internet for, for months or for a month now, in the new address. So they should have the new address. Otherwise, how am I getting signal there if they don't have any... Anyway. So, this thing shit the bed, right? And I got on the phone, and this is after none of them were sending out, you know? And so I I got this guy on the phone, and I was like, look, I'm really sorry about this, but this is kind of at a situation now where I can't go through the regular protocols for this. And I was very calm with him. And I was, and he was, he was just been like, oh, for fuck <laughs> this fucker. Oh no. Why is this guy talking like this? Why is this guy talking like he's a, uh, like he's Christoph fucking Waltz? <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Am I a fool? You make me out to be a fool. <laughs> no, I just said, look, I've had to change, and I was like, can I just ask what address you have there? And he gave me the old address, and I'm like, okay, so this is one issue, all right? And I was very calm, kind of like, again, kind of harnessing a bit of Javier Bardem. All the Bond villains, I was this guy, but calm, that's the thing. That's what's more dangerous. Even though I wasn't trying to be intimidating, and I wasn't intimidating, I was very nice, you know? But I said, look, I've ch tried to change my address three times, for whatever reason, that's not working. Um, I've asked that this thing be sent out. And I've gone through all the protocol. You know, I've checked it. It's bricked, right? So we just need a new router, right? Um, and he, this guy said, well, look, the only thing I can do here is um, to put you again through to the change of address team. And then they'll put you back to someone else in technical. And then they'll have to send you another router. I'm sorry, you'll just have to do the same thing again, he said. And I'm like, look, with the greatest respect. And I was very happy with this line. I said, I can't believe I'm fucking bragging about wrecking someone's day on my podcast, but this is all I have. I'm an absolute whinging Grinch. I need to like read books or something <laughs> so I can expand my uh, my reference pool, my horizons. Right? If I can be anything to you, it is an example of 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 you need to read more, see more, experience more. Otherwise, your entire life is burning the ear off some poor fella. Uh, on an internet service provider, right? This is my whole life now, right? So anyway, I says, 
I says, look, um, I don't want to speak to the billing team again. I hope you can appreciate it. I've spoken to them three times. There's obviously something on your system. Um, at this point, I wouldn't trust the billing team to cut my grass. Do you know what I mean? So I'd rather just, if someone else can change the address on their own time, I'm not, you have the address, you know, it's been confirmed. You have it even there in the notes. And he's like, yeah, I can see it here in the notes. And I'm like, sit there. Like, I don't really want to do any more with that, to be honest. What I really want is the router. So look, I'm going to go out in my car now. Um, can you tell me the address for where I can pick it up on the depot and I'll keep you on the phone? Right. And this is what I'm sure he's like, oh, no, <laughs> I don't want. He's because uh, I've shifted the reality here. I've said something completely outlandish. What? Of course you can't. But it's it should make sense. It should. I, I should be able just to go somewhere. Of course, he knows that I know that I can't pick it up somewhere. But my offer is that, look, I don't even want you to pick it up. Out of the goodness of my heart, I'll pick it up for you. Right. So his offer now of saying, no, we're just going to have to wait two days for DPD is is more contrastingly bad. Because I have offered something that cannot happen. And now he offers something that is so far from that. If, it, if I said nothing, he's like, look, it's just going to be two days. You know? But because I made the offer to go somewhere, this is my thinking, right? This is my thinking, my sales thinking. I've been just a fucking scrow. Also, I should say here, I have a very unfair advantage because he's to keep me satisfied, you know? This is not some sort of like battle of the wits, right? Or anything like that. Because I would lose nine times out of ten, right? If it was a battle of pure wits. Um, so he's like, no, unfortunately... And I was like, well, look, I, you know, what would you do? This is what I said, right? And this is not ego here. But I'm like, well, what would you do if this was like Oris and Utron and they needed a router? <laughs> and he's like the president. And I'm like, yeah. If Michael D. Higgins was five days without the internet and say he needed to give a live streamed speech, you know, to the nation, I'm sure you could find a way of getting a router to him, you know? And I know he's thinking to himself, you fucking are not. I don't even know who you are, clown. But you are not National Treasurer Michael D. Higgins. But he's like, well, and very clever. He said, well, that would actually maybe be a business uh, issue. And I'm like, but the point is that you could probably get a router to him if, if you had to do something to break protocol. I'm sure protocol has to be broken sometimes. Look, the protocol is you want to send off this thing with, with, through DPD. And I'm not kind of satisfied with that right now, you know. So what I did, so he said, well, look, I don't know what to do. don't know where to go with this. And I'm like, well, look, can I speak to someone else? You know, can I speak to maybe someone? Um, and he's like, well, look, I can put in an email request for my manager. And I said, well, look, is there any chance? And again, very kind. I'm trying to be very kind. I'm look, I, I, and I kept saying, I'm so sorry. I know I'm wrecking your head here, but I hope you can appreciate that. I, I you know, I need to get this resolved, you know, um, because really I had nothing fucking better to do. <laughs> it was Dawson, right? It was Dawson all day. But I convinced myself that this was important, that, you know, I've got high bandwidths, right? Those Wii transfers are no fucking joke, okay? So I, um, so he said, well, look, no, um, I'm going to have to put in an email request. And I said, well, look, is there any chance you could use the other avenues that you use to contact your manager, say, like, you know, Slack or Microsoft Teams or whatever it is? Um, and he goes, okay, fine. And then so he puts me on hold for a while. And he says, look, yeah, I put in a message him on Teams. Um, he'll, he'll give you a bell as soon as he can. Now, I need to end this call, right? And I said... Look, I don't want to end the call. And I was like, I'm so sorry to be wrecking your head here. Um, but I need to I need to keep you on the phone so that your manager calls me sooner. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, he's like, but I have other calls to make. And I was like, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but that is exactly the point as to why I need to keep you on the phone. By keeping you on the phone, I've come this far in explaining everything that needs that, that I've been through. I'm going to have to explain that again if I have to speak to someone else. Your manager will call me sooner if I have you on the phone and you have me on hold. And he's like, but I need to answer other calls. I need to end the call. And I'm like, I would. I'm so sorry. And I kept saying this. I'm so sorry. But I have to keep you on the phone. It's the only way. He's like, but you're just going to be on hold. And I'm going to be on hold. And I won't be able to do my work. And I'm like, that's and I was, <laughs> that's the only leverage I have here in this situation. And for, I'm not even lying here. 25 minutes. We were just silent on the phone. I'm such a fucking asshole. I'm such an asshole, right? And you know what? No, sorry, right? I am an asshole, yes. But we we did actually. I'm I'm not. I didn't, I didn't say, say this part. Sonny was home from crash because he had a little he had a bug, tummy bug. So it'd be two days off and at home. I mean, you're not expecting a toddler to be at home. It's a lot, right? And we did one day firmly without TV, and we needed it this day. So I'm like, we just like I need this TV, you know? Uh, I need TV to work. So that's kind of why, you know? Yes, 
it probably would benefited the situation that I was procrastinating and anxious at the same time, right? And needed a small victory for myself. But, you know, that's only that anyway. So twenty five minutes were quiet on the phone, me and this man, that this grown man that I'm wasting his day, right? And then eventually he says, Do you know what, Tony? Actually a technician's become available. <laughs> and they can they can drop one off. They can drop a router off to you tonight. And I was like, Yes, hey you know? And I wasn't cheeky. I was like, Thank you so much. I mean, I was cheeky, so cheeky this whole process, but I said, Thank you so much and i was like my son's homesick thank you so much for that i'm able to do my work he's able to entertain himself i really really appreciate you going outside of what you would normally do for me i don't think i'd you know and i'm you know i didn't go i didn't over egg it or whatever but i was like thank you so much i really appreciate that you know and he's like great so that's been resolved and i said Lan, look as soon as i get the text <laughs> from the technician as to what time they're coming i'll let you go <laughs> and he did he did get me a text he did get me a text now look i say this to you because look I do not believe I deserve special treatment. I like special treatment. I don't believe I'm entitled to special treatment. But I feel like, right, with these, there's a lot of passive income being made by service providers, right? There's, you know, there's old dears who are trying to cancel but can't even navigate the menu. What's technical mean? I'm on Oh, you're true to billing. And then you have to wait for another half hour, right? Like, I have fuck all else to do. I can waste my time on the phone to these people. But there are some people who have real jobs, right? There are some people that actively have to, like, dock themselves a day pay so that they can wait for their internet to come because their son's coming back from Australia and he wants to watch Sky Sports which they've had for three years even though no one watches the sports but Connell might want to watch it do you know what I mean when he's back and they want to have it ready in time there's all these stories (laughs) and I am prohibiting all of them (laughs) from getting their internet fixed because I'm wasting one person's time no but look you know what I mean there's like they're making like a a grand they're making money hand over fist every year And if the internet's not working for a week and they're not even bothered to change the address, I will need to steal, steal, in total, 45 minutes of this man's time. And it's just, look, I I wasn't violent. It was a total nonviolent protest as well. I'm kind of the Mahatma Gandhi of melting your head over the phone. (laughs) I'm kind of Mahatma Gandhi. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not only is he comparing himself to the fucking president of Ireland, now he's on talking about how he's Gandhi. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, David Gandhi, the hot model. Um, no, I'm talking about Mahatma Gandhi. I am as as important. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Like a totally nonviolent protest. I said, I just said no. That would not be to my satisfaction. I would not like to get off the phone right now. That would not be what I would like to do. In that, I know I have this leverage that no one else uses. I'm going to ask that you stay on the line while I hear from your manager. Do you know what I mean? And I I did in the end get. Uh, someone to deliver the box, you know. So there. So that's just look. Word of warning out there. I always like to educate. Okay, you can just be calm, be firm, but kind. You know, and you can get whatever you want. Just if you just say that would not be to my satisfaction to get off the call. Can I speak to someone else? I'd like to find another way of doing something. Do you know what I mean? Just be super dumb, and you'll get your way. What else is going on? Um, Youngful is doing so well in the party. <laughs> He's doing so well in his party. He's doing his party. He's doing his poops and his peas in the party. And he's doing so well. And uh, so if you see him out and about, give him a high five. Tell him you're doing so well in the party. You're doing so well. Um, and he is doing very well in the party. He's telling me, I need to do a wee. I got to do a poop. I mean, you can kind of tell because he's pulling at whatever private part is either his butthole uh, or his uh, his penis, actually. We, we use the correct anatomical language in our house. Um, <laughs> well... I, it doesn't feel comfortable, and everyone, it turns heads whenever, but Terry read that um, children who use the correct anatomical language, it's it's considered by most professionals that this is the case, I don't think there's any stats on it, um, that the children who use the correct anatomical language, like penis, right, uh, are more are better equipped to avoid abuse and are more capable of talking about it if any kind of thing should happen, right? They're more conscious of their... Of all, of all that. Um, so I don't mind that. I mean, it definitely turns heads whenever, like, he goes to the toilet and then Terry shouts in, wipe your penis! Wipe your penis! You know? Um, like, they're like, what the fuck? Do you not even say willy? Like, no. You know, very, she's very firm on this, right? But what I find weird is that, you know, obviously Sonny's very curious. He's got a sister. Who, which I actually still find funny that she doesn't have a penis. I find it funny, funny my wife doesn't have a penis. You know? I think it's mad. I mean, that's pure narcissism uh, main character syndrome. Why don't you have a penis? Everyone has a penis. I have a penis. 
<laughs> you know, I have a willy. Um, so he finds it fascinating. So I'm like, oh, well, no, she doesn't have a penis. I said this. I said, she doesn't have a penis. She has a vagina, right? Didn't even say front bottom, which I've always found so funny. Front bottom. <laughs> so I said, uh, she's got a vagina. And Terry's like, no, she's a vulva. And I'm like, what? What? And she's like, well, the vagina's inside. Like, it's just, just the exterior is the vulva. So that's what we're going to be saying. I'm like, okay. Wipe your vulva, hon. <laughs> Wipe your fucking vulva. So that's what we're going with. Penis and vulva. You know? Um, but, like, he's going to be... I'm also thinking, like, that's fine. You know? But I don't know if we... Do we want to go exclusively down the penis and vulva route? You know? Like, is he going to be in crash being like, that's her vulva? And be like, all right, fucking professor. What the fuck is this? All right, fucking... Uh, um, E.L. James. You're writing some fucking erotica like your old man. What are you using all these fucking words for? You know? So, um, so watch this space. You know? Um, I think we should just be saying Mickey and Gee. But whatever. Whatever. You know? Terry does. I can't, you know, I can't consider this like, oh, fine, Terry, we'll do it your way when it's backed up with clinical psychology. Do you know what I mean? So, that's what's so fucking annoying about her reading all the time. Stop reading! I don't read! That's unfair! You know? I'm pulling this pure... Like, I remember going to college and they're like... Um, I'd say something as like as fact. And they were like, okay, well, where's your references? I'm like, what? Blee? Where's your references to back up that fact? And I'm like, because it is, like... <laughs> I don't know. You know? That's why I do this podcast. <laughs> Reference-free, baby! Reference-free! But, um... Yeah... It is unfair, do you know? Where Where is that? Where, you know, am I not like, like not that I'm like clinically dumber or whatever like that, but is it not some duty of care that you can't just be winning all the arguments all the time? Do you know what I mean? Like I'd like to just know what our attention, like if our attention spans or something can be measured and if, if mine is like clinically low, that she has to be a bit nicer to me, let me win some more arguments, do you know what I mean? Like, I want to say to her sometimes, you know what? Like, you're you're going to win this argument. Before we even start, can I just say you're going to win, right? And I want you to know that now so that you don't enjoy it, okay? All that's happening here is we're talking and I lost, okay? You didn't win, Anton. I lost. You know, you're essentially just talking to a fucking dolphin smashing his head against the plexiglass. That's as much logic as I'm putting into this conversation, okay? So you're going to win. So why am I even arguing? <laughs> why am I even arguing? Why am I even arguing? Do you know what I mean? I know sometimes I win. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Um, but what else is going on? Um, the Oscars happened. The Oscars happened. Banshees of Sharon came back holding the goddamn nuts. The Diddly Idols of Diddly Idol came back with Diddly Squat. Um, I did enjoy uh, parts of the Banshees of Sharon. Um... I thought Barry Keoghan's performance was absolutely fucking transcendent. Um, I thought Colin Farrell gave an incredible... They're all they're brilliant performances. But it's fine. That was fine. You know? That was fine. You know? Great to see. And it's great to see everyone, you know, having their time in the sun. You know? Don't know about Martin McDonough. Jury's still out on him. Although, give us a job. <laughs> give us a job, mate. Um, you know? Do you need do you need a dolphin uh, to, like, balance a ball? I won't be able to balance it, but I can hit it once with my nose. <coughs> you know? Um, but uh, I tell you, saw the SNL, the SNL sketch about they did the Oscars thing, and then there was like a brief thing where they had someone pretend to be Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, and it was they come out and they're like, oh, to talk, to talk, potato, potato, like inel- ineligible, in, you know, inaudible mumblings of Irish. And these are two of the most eloquent enunciated, genius, educated thinkers, philosophers of the arts, specifically the two of them. And Joe you know about Colin Farrell? Whenever he's on a thing and he's doing a video or he's doing a podcast or like that, he gets carried away because he just loves it. He adores it, right? And he talks about, I can't even try and do an impression of Colin Farrell eloquently talking about, um, uh, you know, the philosophies of the characters or the the, the motivations of the characters he chooses and the themes of the movies he chooses because I'm just a dolphin. I'm a big do- <laughs> Right? That's me. He is one of the best spoken. I mean, if you want to have an amazing, beautiful soundbite to reinvigorate your love of film, 
let Colin Farrell speak. You know, and I love about it. He's so Irish that he cringes every time he speaks. He cringes. He's like, oh, fuck. Everyone's going to think I'm a fucking muppet for saying that. He still has it. He's been in L.A. longer than he's been in Ireland. And he still cringes at the fact that he sometimes is genuine. I love it. And I love him. So don't be so fucking reductive, SNL. Muppets, mate. Reducting, reducing those, you know. And Brendan Gleeson. National treasure. Um, but yeah, they came back with Dilly Fuck All. Um, which is a shame. Um, and I did enjoy Everything Everywhere all at once. At the time, I thought it was the best film I've seen all year. But it's just mad, isn't it? Just when anything is a... Um, I'm just so fucking emo. <laughs> I'm so punk. That even when I think I want the thing I want to win, I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You go off it. All right, enough about that, you know? Now I now want the Fablemans to win. The most, you know. Let's give Sp- Steven Spielberg more. Um, Terry hated the Fablemans. She was like, why is this a film? Why are we watching this? But we're only watching this because it's Steven Spielberg's story. And I'm like, duh, duh, no shit, no shit. But come on, the story is Kiwi Kwan. Best supporting actor, Kiwi Kwan, who, short round from Temple of Doom, reunited on stage with Harrison Ford, gives him a big old kiss. Come on. Kiwi, come on. And look, listen, live. This lad was out of the game. This lad, child star, got disenfranchised with the industry. Couldn't land roles, especially couldn't land roles that weren't reductive. That weren't reductive for Asian Americans, you know? Comes back, I think it's his second flick, second flick back acting in what, his 40s? It is his 50s? And then he wins an Oscar, you know? And listen, you're never out. You're never done. You can always pivot. You can always get back into something. I love that. He's going to be a cons. I'm so glad that that is on file, on paper, and on celluloid. That you are never out. For him to do that and then win a fucking Oscar. You know? Like you getting... You can lose five pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can lose five pounds. You can get into yoga. You can fix your mobility. You know? You can become a carpenter in your 40s. Like, becoming a carpenter in your 40s? I would say is a hundred times easier than winning an Academy Award for Best Exporting Actor. Would you agree? You know? Um, Become a tree surgeon. uh, Start painting. Get a viral video. All these things. Get 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. All easier than winning an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor after being shut out of the industry. Do you know what I mean? So, Kiwi Kwan. Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker's back. Uh, BBC apparently have apologised for um, giving him giving him the day off. I tell you, thank God, thank bloody God, that born with result, blah, fucking blah. Hey Gary, next time, uh, next time Liverpool fucking spunk uh, some good good form. Um, have a go at the Tories again, please. <laughs> hey Gary, next time Liverpool come from a seven nil to be the United to lose to fucking relegations and burn. <laughs> have a go at the Tories. It's good to know that the Tories do actually have a hop on issue, which is uh, calling them just the language they use. That's sort of language they used in the, in the the thirties in Germany. You know, <laughs> so good to know. Uh, I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to talk about that. But what I will say is, thanks for listening to this podcast. And um, this car, unfortunately, has turned um, a little bit into a sauna here. I'm sweating buckets, and um, I'm going to have to pull the plug on this. But listen, thanks very much for listening to this. I'm so sorry that these pods, even though I'm having fun with them, I've all been recorded in my car, and you have to hear sounds outside. Update on the home studio is um, it'll be happening. It'll be happening probably in two weeks. Two weeks' time, we'll probably have the very first recorded with a set, with lighting, lights, camera, action from my home studio that I'm turning into an, a set so I can have guests over like a late-night talk show. So you have that to look forward to. And thank you very much for listening to the pod. And thanks to Now for sponsoring this pod and for allowing me, through sponsorship, to get there even sooner, uh, to have a home studio. Um, and let me tell you this, once I have the studio, do you know you ever have the thing in your head, you're like, oh, this is the one thing that's going to fix everything. It's going to fix my productivity. It's going to fix, um, <laughs> you know, my uh, my depression. Uh, this studio is that thing, you know. Sometimes it's, you know, you think it's ordering something from ASOS, but it's not. It's actually this home studio. So once I have this, I will probably be happy for the rest of my life. 
Um, but anyway, thanks very much for listening to the pod. If you like this pod and want to hear more, you can do so over on patreon.com forward slash Tony Cantwell, where every single Friday there is a brand new podcast that you haven't heard yet. There's over like 150 now over there. So uh, do check them out. Uh, and also, whenever I have live podcasts, the half of the tickets go on early bird to podcast listeners. So if you've missed a gig in the past, they haven't sold out, and I'm very grateful they've been sold out. Um, you can get them over there. Thanks very much for listening. All the best. Bye-bye. Let's only get one.